The Tinder swindler has become a recent sensation and now everyone is talking about con artists and scams. Historically, people haven't been kind to the victims of these types of cons, but what if we told you that you're more vulnerable to a con than you think? There's a reason why these people get away with so much, and today we're going over what makes a scam work and why they can even trick you. Welcome to Alux. Tale as old as time. Scams have been around for hundreds of years, and they've ranged from the simple to the absurd. And we're fascinated by them. We all love con stories, even if we would hate to fall for one. Think the Ocean's Eleven trilogy, or Catch Me If You Can. There's just something about seeing a con come together, all the absurdities and deception. It's fascinating to see, but terrible to be a part of. There are some great movies that we don't even think of as cons, like Inception or The Usual Suspects, but they are about deception. Through history, there have been some pretty outlandish cons, like Victor Lusting, who sold the Eiffel Tower twice, or Frank Abagnale, who deceived everyone into thinking he was a pilot, a doctor, and a lawyer. But not all of these cons are so in-your-face absurd. With time, con artists have become more sophisticated. You would think that with the age of information, falling for scams would be almost impossible. After all, you can find out anything about anyone within minutes. But faking an identity is actually easier than ever with social media. Make an Instagram account, take a couple of pictures in the right places, and people will start to believe you have a type of life that is not real. We built an entire industry around this concept, with social media influencers doing whatever it takes to sell the impression. Fake it till you make it. That's what Anna Sorokin tried to do. If you haven't seen Inventing Anna on Netflix, here's a short summary. She pretended to be a wealthy German heiress and defrauded major financial institutions, hotels, and people in the highest circles of New York. And for the most part, she succeeded until the lie became too large to handle. And don't make the mistake of thinking you're above it all. There's a reason why they say pride comes before the fall. Have you seen any shows about scams? It can all look so ridiculous from the outside. After all, who would believe all of these things? Only a gullible person, right? You would never fall for a scam, would you? Or if you did, you'd probably get out first. Well, think again. That hubris could be your undoing. Because as it turns out, evolution has made us all the perfect scam victims. Before you know it, you're already way too deep. And at that point, it can even be more difficult to accept what's going on. In our video about deliberate practice, we discussed the sunk cost fallacy and how it affects our decision-making skills. But it's also a big factor to explain why people have such a hard time seeing that they're being scammed. Nobody wants to accept that they've been taken for a ride, that someone has played them, not only in front of other people, but to ourselves. That's in part what makes some scams so effective. We don't want to admit it. Instead, we often double down. Do we accept we lost our money and turn back? No, that payment is just around the corner. We just have to send more money. What about hearing our family and friends' concerns about that sketchy person we're talking to? Nah, they're all wrong, clearly just jealous. We want so hard to believe that it's real, that we throw caution and rationality to the wind. Scammers prey on people's trust, greed, and hope. We all dream of that easy life, finding that perfect someone and achieving all of our dreams. If someone came along and promised you all of that, you would probably think it sounds too good to be true, and you'd be right. But deep down, a part of you wants to believe, and they only need that spark to start a fire. We think scams are obvious because we're looking at them from the outside. But con artists are devious people, and they know how to exploit our weaknesses. These are people that psychologists say exhibit three key negative personality traits. Psychopathy, narcissism, and Machiavellianism. These traits in conjunction are called the dark triad, and that's a very dangerous cocktail. They lack empathy and remorse. They're manipulative and will go to any extent to get what they want. And last but not least, they're extremely self-entitled. You'd be surprised how much you can get away with when you absolutely don't care about others. And the examples we've talked about so far are only the tip of the iceberg. In Australia, in 2022 alone, there have been over 21,000 reports of various forms of scams. Just in January, a total of $34.163 million had been swindled from people. 
most of it's been from investment scams, but around $5.2 million has come from dating scams, just like the one from the Tinder swindler, at least in principle. A key element in avoiding falling for a scam is knowing that nobody is safe. Don't make the mistake of assuming you're too smart for that. According to statistics, nearly one in three Americans fell for a phone scam in 2021, with the average loss reported being over $500. These people are clever and ruthless. When they smell blood, they hunt you, and if they get a taste, they'll keep coming back for more. But to understand how all of this goes down, you need to know how they get you. Not all scammers are the same, but the most effective of them use psychology and social engineering to their advantage. It's like a dark twist on a self-help book, or how supervillains are twisted mirrors of some heroes. Because some of them have become very skilled, like Frank Abagnale, who the movie Catch Me If You Can is based on. According to Dr. Robert Cialdini, a noted psychologist with a special interest on the science of influence, scammers use six universal principles of influence to get what they want. These six principles are reciprocity. When someone does something good for you, no matter how small, you feel indebted to them. We're inclined by nature to reciprocate the actions of others. It's like how we trust people instinctively. One thing we know by now, scammers exploit mercilessly. Consistency. We want to be reliable, as this is a trait that we value in others. That's why when we make a decision, we tend to stick with it. We rationalize and justify our actions to be in line with that of the initial decision. This idea is similar to the sunk cost fallacy, and scammers love exploiting this trait. It's part of a technique known as foot in the door. The idea is that by agreeing to a small request or answering a simple question, it makes it easier for scammers to keep making incremental requests. You already said yes to the one before so why not say yes again? It's only a little bit more, and you want to be consistent. It's much harder to say no when you've already said yes once. You'll find ways to make sense of things, but by the time you know it, things have gotten way out of hand. Social proof. We mentioned before how we won't admit to being scammed. We want validation that shows we're in the right. So once again, we rationalize what's going on and even get other people involved. A lot of scams work because we're roped in by the people that we trusted. People that have already been scammed themselves. Maybe they haven't even realized it or just refused to admit it. It's how pyramid businesses, multi-level marketing, and Ponzi schemes get you. They get people to act as their ambassadors to show their success, but it's all a house of cards. Liking. We mentioned before how scammers use the validation of others to get to us, but sometimes they even pretend to be. It's easier to say yes to someone we know or find to be nice. Fizing scams, for instance, often use the contacts of a person to target their friends instead of them. By pretending to be you, they can ask your friends for help, and you'd be surprised how many fall for it. Authority. People are not good at dealing with authority. A lot of us shy away and instinctively follow what people in charge tell us to do. We're more likely to say yes to someone we perceive as powerful or wealthy, which is why they pose as executives, rich people, or government agents. They take advantage of our respect or fear of authority figures. And finally, scarcity. When we think something is in short supply or we could be missing out on a big opportunity, we freak out. This phenomenon is being called FOMO or fear of missing out. Financial scams use this to push the idea that the product or investment opportunity is a once-in-a-lifetime deal, the next Facebook or Netflix. Then once you're in, they disappear. Another tactic that scammers use is fear and pressure. This is most common in social and romantic scams. If you saw the Tinder swindler, you probably noticed how he emotionally manipulated his victims. First, he made them feel afraid for him, like his life, and then later on, theirs was in danger. Then he rubbed salt on the wound by pushing how he needed money to survive or he would die. When someone you love is in danger, you don't think straight, and they know that. But protecting yourself from a con requires more than just knowing the techniques they use to get you. You need to see the signs of the scam itself, not only the scammer. But nowadays, there's so many ways to fake being rich that it's becoming increasingly more difficult to tell reality from illusion. And that is thanks to the age of social media. 
We touched on earlier about how social media and the internet has made scams much more easier in a way. You don't need to buy fancy designer bags, you can take pictures with them in places that allow you to try them out. You can rent helicopter rides for the illusion that you live a high-paced lifestyle. So how do we know that anything we see online is real? Well, the truth is, we don't. We can't know for sure. You don't even need to visit these locations if you're skilled enough in Photoshop. And it's all about appearances. That's how a lot of these con artists got in in the first place. They knew they needed to have the talk of a rich person and they needed to look the part. Scams have been going on since the dawn of time and they'll likely continue to be a thing forever. We'll see more stories pop up over the years and as technology grows and the world changes, con artists are going to get a lot bolder. So Aluxers, if something sounds too good to be true, just be careful, okay? And since you stuck around with us until the end, of course, as always, you know we've got a bonus for you, the true Aluxers. Thanks to the popularity of the Netflix show, now everyone knows Anna Delvey or Sorokin, but there have been a lot more scams in recent history. Another story headed for the silver screen is that of Elizabeth Holmes, founder of Theranos. The movie called Bad Blood will take us through the rise and fall of this healthcare tech con. She claimed to have developed a skin patch that could provide on-the-spot medical analysis, all with a single drop of blood. But clearly that was all a lie and it came crashing down spectacularly. And that's that's a wrap for us today, Aluxers. Do you have any experiences with scammers you'd like to share? Drop your stories in the comments below, it can help everyone learn. Thank you for watching this video, Aluxer. If you found it valuable, consider subscribing to our channel and joining our awesome community. And if you're still hungry for more, we handpicked this video for you to watch next, or head over to our website for more amazing content. See you tomorrow.